All right. Welcome back, y'all. That's another episode of Elevated Today. Chris here. I got Danny, the glass parrot, Danny Nyberg. He's one of our uh, local glass artists. He works over at Elevate Premier, the Elevate Premier Studio. Um, super stoked to have him in the shop here with me today. Uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about Danny's glass, a little bit of what goes on at Elevate Premier, what he does over there, and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, thanks for joining, guys. Uh, uh, Let's dive right into it. So, Danny, how did you get started with blowing glass? Um, actually, it was kind of interesting. Uh, collected glass pretty much my whole life, just every little glass figurine. And my mom found a Italian crystal studio up in uh, Denver called Agnes Glass, and went up there, took her course, and just kind of ran with it. Once I got home, because I ended up making like three or four big ass bases at her, nice. you know, nice and costly. So was that, was that soft glass that he actually got started with, or um, was it still Boro? I mean, it's not Boro, but technically they call it soft glass, but it's got a much lower COE than gotcha. Boro because gotcha. it's lead-based quartz. Okay. So okay. it's so real, real if I remember high, correctly, high tip. If I remember correctly, Boro's COE 33, soft yeah. glass is 96? Yeah, soft glass is 96, whereas your Italian crystal and the stuff that you see Chihuly doing, yeah. Being lead-based quartz and stuff is down near like quartz almost has a zero COE naturally. That's why it doesn't break. Yeah. When you put it in the glass. Well, when or you, it, when you put it in the water. Excuse me. Yeah. You. With, it with makes heat. it heat shock resistant, but makes it also more brittle than core. Yeah, exactly. It just kind of depends on your application. Definitely. Uh, so how long ago was that? When did you get started? Uh, let's see, I did that class in March of 2002, and I started my home studio basically with a hothead torch head in, in April, so it's been cool. 18 years now. Very cool, very cool. Um, so what, uh, what was like the first thing you ever made? But, I mean, you mentioned those bases, but in your home studio, what was the first? Eight. Beads. I made beads, I made pendants and marbles, uh, I've been braiding hemp jewelry at the time to make extra money and just got tired of uh, buying the beads and a friend brought that torch head over, a little hothead single fuel torch head. Nice. I just started throwing stuff together from uh, from the books and stuff that I had, so just tried trying out different techniques. Do you have any of those beads that you whipped up no. years ago? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, you, let's see, so how long after you were making those beads did you start to get into like functional glass and pipes? And uh, functional, I moved into Boro, I think, uh, let's see, 2002 is when I started, uh, just about two years doing soft glass and kiln fusing, uh, and then moved into Boro in about 2004, so um, that's when I got my first couple of rainbacks. Um, where did you... Uh, Gets your inspiration for your work? Were you uh, just uh, trying to like do things by the book first of all, or were you doing more experimentation? Well, I mean, when I first started, there wasn't books. There wasn't uh, a, there wasn't an art scene per se. Okay. You could yeah, have, you our, couldn't go talk to uh, glass blowers because you weren't allowed in their studio because of pipe dreams. Yeah, was it was really about. hard to find anything that wasn't imported glass at the, in the stores and stuff. So I kind of just played on my own with my own techniques, figured things out, but, you know, uh, mimicked whatever little beads that I found at the bead shops and whatnot, and just tried to make them better than yeah. the cheap little three-cent white heart beads that I was buying. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was real, it was hard to learn, and, you, like, the Flow magazine was, it was around, but you couldn't find a copy of it here in town, like, yeah. anywhere. So... For, for those that are watching that may not know, could you elaborate on what Operation Pipe Dreams was a little bit? Uh, Operation Pipe Dreams was basically an operation by the federal government that since all of us were blowing glass pipes and being degenerate artists, automatically we were dealing drugs. Whether we had even a pipe in our studio or not, you were blowing glass, they might come knock on your door. So there was like a lot of, I don't know, a bunch of like secrecy. Is like, I guess the right word. Yeah, it made the, it made the industry very cloak and dagger for a lot of years, uh, pretty much up until about Google came around. Very cool, very cool. Uh, what is your one of your favorite uh, styles or techniques to work with? Uh, honestly, my favorite style and technique to work with to this day is still fume work. Uh, cool. Applicable in absolutely every style, every technique out there. It always looks fun. 
it's color changing, you know, it's still the number one most most asked for thing yeah, that I've ever did is you got chameleon, chameleon pieces. No, I got color changing pieces because that's a brand name. This is how it's done. For sure. Thanks for joining everybody. We appreciate everybody stopping in here. Um, we got we have Danny here. Uh, he's uh, one of our blowers over at Elevate Premier. Uh, how long have you been renting space over? Uh, I've actually only been there uh, since about, let's see, about March, April this year. So when the world shut down. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, cool. The world came to an end and I found a great spot to go work yeah, at. That's cool. <laughs> no, we, I know we, we appreciate having you at the studio. Uh, I know one of the things that you've been working on is tears and making knobs for our vaporizers. Yeah. You know, tell me a little bit about that. I know I have one right here. This little black and white knob. This one Danny pointed out to me on the shelf that he had made. So yeah, could you tell me a little um, bit about the making of knobs here? You know, it, it, surprisingly, I thought this was going to be a lot simpler of a, of a process than when I finally found out exactly how much we put into this. Yeah. Um, like the tiers themselves, the, like before you even get a tier, your back end eight or nine sticks at once and you're sitting there loading lots of extra layers of clear because all that color when you hit that you see now starts about zapping around as the rod and we stretch it out and get it down to being that thin little rod in the center. Um, after that it's just mainly it, it, you know building your base on it, uh, pushing the pushing it correctly so that you guys are able to add the little that, uh, Reostat. There we go. Reostat. Yeah. Just make sure that it always looks good and sits center. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always kind of interesting to set it up. How long have you known Danny? Uh, Very cool. So, how many of these knobs would you say have you made in like since March? <laughs> Tough question, I know. Um, like, I lost count within so, like three days. Like, well, the first thing I, I just was stopped a counting. Lot, so a lot times a lot is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, have you made a fumed knob yet? Have you made, or did you stick to like the, the series? No, I stick, to, I stick to those. Uh, I've been working kind of on one of the custom styles that we can do. You know, we all uh, we can all come up with our own little custom yeah. one. I've been trying a few styles. I haven't really found one that I actually like and go, okay, that's the one I want to do. Um, um, I know just from experience of knowing you that one of your favorite things that you like making is space models. And those are one of my favorite things that I first saw when I first was getting into glass. Like, how in the absolute heck did they do that? So how, like, your space marbles, can you tell me a little bit about those, like all the work that goes into those? Um, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, a, lot of my, uh, a lot of my space marbles, I don't do a single layer or just, you know, here's a planet in the star fields. I've, uh, over the years, I've, uh, I've learned to how to stack moons in there and then put enough separation so that they'll cause a orbital shadow in the sunlight when you kill the oh, marble, the shadow from the moon will pass across the planet. Uh, all your stars normally are made out of ground silver, like we'll grind it down real fine, stamp it on there, and then burn it on so that it turns bright, bright, bright white. Gotcha. Um, you know, nebula clouds are normally a, a nice gold fume, a little silver fume in it, you gotta catch it real quick because it'll burn out that quick before you catch it. Uh, with mine, I like to do multiple layers, and then a lot of times I like to back, since most people put black to make it, you know, of course, a space, yeah. you know, color of space and really make the stars pop, I'll flip that over and then I'll do another space, uh, I'll do another star field directly on the outside, so that the back also kind of matches the inside, and that way, you, that way when you're turning the marble, it's still, it's not just blank, blank back. Yeah, so you've got detail on everything, even yeah. when you're not looking at it. The, yeah. the meat of the marble. Yeah. Um, how how long ago did you start making those, and was that like a, did that take a while to refine uh, that technique? Man, uh, I think my first time I ever did space stages was probably yeah, I don't know. Um, I got the I got the idea from seeing one float by on uh, my Facebook. So I mean, we're talking. It's like literally the start of Facebook days. Yeah, like when glass floors were first starting to put things on. When, when all of a sudden the name game actually became a thing because 
you could find out, you know, oh, there's this artist over here in California by this name who does incredible work, and uh, the first space scene that I got shown after just kind of playing around trying to make something that yeah. looked like space was uh, Gates and Draco. I was about to ask if yeah. you've ever seen if you were I've with seen Gates him. I, uh, I got chewed out by, uh, by a bunch of glass blurs because they said I was biting them, even though I never heard of them when I made my space scene. I just played around because my grandpa always worked for NASA, so space oh, has no. always been a big theme in my life. My, my argument to when, when glass artists try to say, oh, so-and-so is biting, so and so's technique is like how many how many painters painted this? Well, I mean, I've always kind of, I've always held the idea of you can't really be original in an art form that's been around since ancient Egypt. Yeah, exactly. Um, but on the same note, like I won't willing if somebody actually works a style, I'm not going to willingly copy their style and try to make money off of yeah. it. That's directly biting when you're trying to make what exactly what they make and sell it for. Sell it under your name as one of theirs. That's fine. Yeah, you know, and that's. I mean, it's just rude. Yeah, for sure. Um, but his 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 marbles are absolutely astounding. <laughs> yeah, I don't even think I've seen one in person. I'm still every time I see. I've seen two of them in person, and it, like I still can't fathom how he does the depth in that. Yeah, it's uh, it's ridiculous, and, and the, the cleanliness on some of those plants that he puts in there is perfect, perfect right. circle. It's really really amazing. Um, What's uh, like one of the most difficult pieces or styles that you've ever attempted? Is mm -hmm. there a certain technique or a certain piece that, you, that comes to mind? Actually, you're slightly. <laughs> Every single recycler. I, I, made, floor. I <laughs> made my very uh, the very first cycler, uh, recycler I ever did actually looked good and functioned properly. And I have yet in another like seven or eight years to make another one that looks good or functions like, properly. I, the three, and I hit it on the first one and I was just like, cool, I think I know how to do it. When to go do it again? When? I uh, guess not. I have, a, I have a marble that I made. It's probably a year and a half ago at this point now. And I did like a vortex and it has a little planet inside the vortex. Oh, I, I've probably tried that seven or eight times since then. I, <laughs> I, I nailed it the first try and I was like, yo, oh, this is amazing. And then never again since. Oh, yeah. And, and that's how you see over a lot of flukes in glass. <laughs> yeah. And I've made like progress and stuff, but still, it was just I got the luck of it on oh, yeah. the first try. Um, what's the most amount of time you've put into a single piece? Whether that's like. Uh, that would actually be my, uh, my Champs Goblet for 2015. I did a double amber purple goblet. Uh, like the stem and everything, it took, I, I think I put like a month and a half to building different sections and uh, I did it off of my Demon Age series that I had done. Is it like a, like a Chaos Amber Purple like swirl or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 Amber Purple's always, uh, and Double Amber Purple have been my go-to striker colors for the longest time I can remember. Somebody I saw on Instagram the other day called those the, uh, the original hype colors. They were. Uh, because we basically had crayon colors and we had a few see-through colors and when Don't Lamber Purple came along, it was the first one that you could make eight, nine colors out of one rock. Yeah. You pull blues, you pull purples, you pull And that's pull because lights. of the silver content, right? Yeah. Uh, among a few other things. Yeah. I'm not really sure what's in it. I just love it. Yeah, right? And it's, it's super easy to work with two real buttery and yeah. smooth. Um, do you have artists that you look up to or draw inspiration from? Oh yeah, all the time. Actually, I wear one. Uh, the one that I wear. Uh, this is this is a uh, Cajun Rick and Marnie out of Longmont, Colorado. Cajun Glass Design. Nice. I've literally worn this thing every single day since I got it two years ago. Like I don't take it off. Heck yeah. Like, they're probably my favorite husband or uh, husband and wife artist team. Very uh, cool. In the game. Cool. Uh, them, uh, Chad Parker's always been a, a friend and somebody I really look up to. He did the monster marbles. Uh, he does mar he does these little face marbles called monsters, and he does a lot of charity work with them. He's out in uh, Pittsburgh uh, or uh, Pennsylvania, sir. I think I've seen little face marbles. Yeah, I feel like I have seen those. Uh, they've been here. He's come to town a few times for some different events and done collabs with other people. They, they float around every once in a while. Um, 
You mentioned Champs a minute ago. Have you competed in a lot of Champs? I've done the Goblet Grab. Every time Champs comes to Denver, I'll enter the Goblet Grab, the Marble, uh, the Marble Comp, because, well, who doesn't want to play a game of Marble? Yeah, it's always fun. Um, I've kind of avoided trying to step up into the heady rig and the heady pieces for the longest of time because I'm unrealistic about my skill level and looked up and went, yeah, no, I wouldn't have been even close to, like, I mean, like Shayla. Yeah. I've known Shayla for years and she's at every chance that I've gone to in Denver Killer. and it's just like, oh, okay, there's Shayla's piece, well, never mind. <laughs> Shayla's taking one of the top three places no. again this year. <laughs> Uh, we love her. We actually just got a bunch of her work in uh, that's going to hit the shelf pretty soon. Ooh, nice. Just keep your eyes peeled for that. And they'll uh, just got finished pictures taken for the website, so it'll be on the website as well. Uh, yeah, go ahead. And if you, if you feel like uh, smoking a bowl, go ahead. Oh, yeah, so this yeah. pipe here. <laughs> okay. So this is my first crushed open pipe. This is in if you want to get closer, then you can actually show yeah. it off real quick for a second. Like, yeah, you might want to get light bouncy. Yeah, that's that's the goal. There we go. Ooh, look at all of that like, sparkle. For, uh, for not knowing what I was doing with crushed opal, I mean, I've worked with opal and dicro over the years, but we never really kind of had this. This was definitely a learning technique. It screwed up on me a couple of times. That's why I kept it. Um, because it cracked a couple of times and I was able to heal it while working, but it's just kind of my favorite little, uh, my favorite Sherlock now. It's one of those ones that I've always wanted to crush opal peas, but they're way out of my price range and I popped one together that just looked kind of cool and I was like, well, I love Sherlock's and it's like, this is mine now. Nice. Nice. Could you uh, talk a little bit about why uh, opal and crushed opal are so hard to work with? Um, okay, well, basically because the, the opals that we have, um, they're synthetic. Most, uh, <laughs> most of us order from uh, my friend Nate at Profound Opals, aka Grandpa Glass. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is no matter how you treat them, no matter how many times you throw them through the kiln to anneal them, you put them under a polariscope and they're always stressed. You can never believe the stress that they create. We're not really sure why that is. It's something about the glass that the opals are made with compared to Poro, but it always puts them under stress. Gotcha. And synthetic opals are used because real opals have too high of a water content. It's not only that. Uh, you can't encase any stone that's less than a Mohs 8 or higher on the hardness scale. Gotcha. So you basically start at ruby and emerald uh, quartz and the diamond are the ones that you can really encase. Sapphire as well. They make, uh, they make new... Uh, Quartz nails that are now made out of sapphire and glass as well. Hey, uh, they're, they're, they're pricey. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. But they can they, they can take way more heat. It's kind of fun. What about uh, like this moldavite here? Okay, moldavite is a very interesting this. substance. This and it's one of the reasons why I like it so much is it's probably one of the rarest minerals on earth because it doesn't come from here. Moldavite it, it, it you. It, was found in Czechoslovakia. That's Moldavite, this chunk yeah. hanging off the bottom right there. Yeah, Moldavite comes from Czechoslovakia, and it comes from a meteorite impact. And basically, is it just it, one specific one, or is it? Yeah, like it, it, literally, the Moldavite it, it only comes from that one area where that where that meteorite hit. Okay. And basically, when it hit uh, the natural tektite in the area. They uh, took a lot of the uh, heat and a lot of the different uh, minerals that came off of that, and that's how moldavite pretty much is. It's a type of tektite, but it's not technically from this planet. It's an extraterrestrial glass, whereas your blue and your black tektites you can find naturally here. Those and are they do the same thing. Strikes, correct? Yeah, Although they I'm do beach. the same thing. You can uh, you can sit there and uh, fuse them to glass, or you can fuse. Uh, Few, a few artists over the years, I've seen new sculptures and they'll have big pieces of uh, tektite and they'll fuse the feet directly to it. That's cool. You know, little alien sculptures. Can you stuff. encase that or would it just... You can. It, it well, yeah. I've encased it before and it just goes completely see-through. I mean, this is a oh, gemstone. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's an actual gemstone, so when cut and polished, they're perfectly see-through. Like, the one that I put on here, this is, uh, like, it, it was a bit costly. It's a triple-A flawless. It's 15 carats. Like, I mean... It, at a store, at a store, and a piece of jewelry, it's an expensive piece. Like even for me. Moldavite, K elevate Casey here. She said Moldavite's good to open your mind for lucid dreaming as well. Yeah, 
Uh, I've been used in playing at Dreamcatchers. I've had a few, uh, I used to have a few Moldavite pendants as well. Nice. Lots of energy from it. I, I, I mean, kind of wonder what happens when I'm adding fire to it, because it glows a completely different color. Like, That's cool. Where like, most glass will glow that kind of orangish, yeah. dip orangish to red, it immediately glows yellow, stays yellow, but adds white to it. It like becomes more banana colored as it's glowing. And it's just kind of weird, because I've never seen any form of glass. Like, even quartz goes straight to white and just super bright when you Yeah. Like, yeah, it hits a light spectrum I've never seen. That's cool. That's very cool. I, I love pieces that have moldavite. Uh, I've seen it, like, encapsulated almost, where uh -huh. they'll, like, blow a bubble and then seal it off with the moldavite inside. Yeah, a lot of that is because a lot of us aren't willing to melt down the mold of it. Um, it's, a, it, it's a gemstone again. Why, why ruin yeah. the natural beauty of the stone? Like, yeah, there's a couple artists I've seen who will actually take tons of mold of it. They'll melt it all the way down and they've blown spoons out of it. Oh, they've wow. done marbles out of it. Uh, there's a guy who makes cubes out of it. You know, I might do that with some more quality ones, but some of the nicer yeah. and some of the rare, rarer shapes, and they're real hard to fit, hard to get. So, does it come in different colors, or is it all that no, kind of green. smoky green? It's all that smoky green. Uh, if you've got blue, you've got natural tectite, and if you've got uh, the blackish brown, you've got tectite that came from uh, dark clay, I believe, yeah, if I remember. The type of clay that creates the dark one. Gotcha. Do you, uh, do you do collaborations with other artists? Yeah. Actually, I've got one here with me right now. This Heck is yeah. probably... Well, hello, Hick Dog. we got Hick Dog in the house. Hey, what's up, Hick Dog? Is, you got Danny here? Yeah, so let's love, talk about I love the, your work, man. Let's talk about uh, this collab you got here. So, this is a collab between me and Bert, or Bert Schooner. Uh, we all call him Robbie at the shop. But... And short, uh, shorts glass, uh, shorts glass. Shorts glass, yeah. Thanks. I call him Babito. Yeah. I did a uh, six hole uh, down stem for it, removable. Real fun little machine gun perk. And then we both did sets of wags, like I did those and the yellow ones. He did this and all the shaping for it. A real fun piece. And then the other part of the set is the. Rob Locke, this is his design for a Sherlock, which, of course, you know, I love making Sherlock, so this was guaranteed to happen. Um, and I did the lighter color wags. He did the majority black wags on it, and I made a little cube out of some of the tubing. And then, just for fun, since I had a little tubing left over, I made a uh, bubble cap that goes, that matches the down stem and the top section. Nice. So... Yeah, fun. You said you made this uh, this solid cube here out of tubing. How do you get the tubing to I go solid? Here, uh, like, that. Nice. I mean, that, it, like, I, I wish I could say I did something really fancy or some cool little trick, but no, I just sat there and straight sucked the air out of it on my own, just manual style until nice. I had it solid. Very cool. Did you wag it up before it was hollow or before yes. it was solid? Yes. Gotcha. I, I wagged it uh, way before it was solid because you know, once you have it solid and you try to wag it, it doesn't wag. It just gotcha. kind of smears your lines in uh, different directions, spins them, and you don't really get the effect that you're looking for. for sure. Whereas if you wag it before, you can get the actual multiple termination is all in it. It's a reversal. Yeah. Um, well, all the effects that everybody's looking for. Basically. Do you have a favorite artist that you have collaborated with in the past? Honestly, no. I mean, I, I, because of when I started in glass, like I'm just now getting to the to where I'm doing collabs with gotcha. people. I've done a couple of by mail collabs with Chad Parker. We've done uh, my demon eggs combined with his monster marbles and a couple other uh, ideas like that. But other than that, I really had never gotten the chance. I didn't really kind of leave my studio. I heard because of like the, the pipe dreams thing. Well, I mean, it was long after the pipe dreams thing. Too. I mean, it, that attitude of, you know, nobody wanting to share techniques or secrets kind of stuck around for almost yeah. a good decade after Pipe Dreams. It, 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 until Revered Glass kind of put that, uh, put that, uh, the first YouTube videos up. Yeah, the Revered Glass uh, videos. It, it, are, none of that stuff, right, and nobody was sharing info, nobody wanted to teach anybody. And then he starts popping those up, and the face group books finally popped up for Glass, and... So the glass artist finally got this chance to 
be social, to talk to each other, to interact and be colleagues. You compare when, and contrast the word and like, styles. I mean, until, uh, like, most of us had never even heard of change. Uh, you know, or if we had heard of it, we'd ne we had never gotten to go to it because it was always in Vegas. It was always kind of random when it would pop gotcha. up. You know, by the time you heard about it, it was like three days after oh. it. You know, gotcha. so the glass games were kind of a mystery to a lot of the, a lot of the younger blowers back then, stuff like that. Sure. I mean, just it, it is what it was. Uh, I really love how the industry has evolved now. Um, on some notes, on other notes, I get a little aggravated by it, but I mean, that's just because I'm an old schooler, so yeah. it's kind of hard to watch the things that you put a lifetime worth of stuff into change and become something that you didn't have a hand in actually helping change at that point. Gotcha. It's just kind of watching your world evolve and either keep with it yeah. or drop out. Gotcha. You know? What but, sort of things have, like, what sort of, like, I know, for me, when I got into dabbing, or when I got into smoking even, dabbing was just becoming a thing, male joints were all the rage, <laughs> and then now here it's like, like <laughs> six, seven years later, and like nobody wants a piece of a male joint. Like what sort of things, like changes like that have you witnessed uh, throughout your career? Um, well, I mean, I saw the, uh, the creation of dab rigs. We didn't have dab rigs in 2002. Nobody was dabbing, we, uh, you know, and if you did, it wasn't dabbing for a nice thing. We didn't even have the uh, we didn't have the funnel and swing yet. Gotcha. We didn't have titanium anything yet. I mean, even when we first got our uh, when we first started making domes and nails and stuff, we were using class nails. We didn't have the cool little adjustable titaniums yeah. from higher education. We didn't have anything of a quartz nail or even a uh, you know a domeless yeah. nail. Those didn't come around for a few years after that. I mean, I've kind of gotten to watch what originally went from. I got a funnel and a couple of knives sitting in my stove, which yeah. we all did as kids to go and smoke ass because there was no other way other than mm -hmm. throw it on top of your bowl. Yeah. And so knife hits were a thing back then, and we got to watch that go from that to, you know, I'm sitting here hitting off of helixes, and, and, and there goes my earpiece. Whoops. I got it. Technical but, difficulties. Yeah, you know. No, nope. wardrobe malfunctions. Uh, oh. You know, to, to recyclers and, and, you know, I got to watch bombs go from being bombs to having tree parts and having all this scientific stuff thrown in on the glycerin tubes of, uh, arrive. I mean, I got to kind of watch uh, the same thing that, I, uh, that most of my generation got to watch with video games and with uh, the internet. I got to firsthand see with, in the glass industry and be part of watching that evolve and learning while like everybody that. else was learning. I guess renaissance sort of on glass would be a, yeah. the right word. Yeah, basically, just kind of uh, uh, right after everybody, re uh, right after Degenerate Art uh, came out, I mean, that's a fantastic it movie. If you've never seen it, I believe it's on YouTube, Degenerate Art. Yeah. So good. Definitely. Um, and, t and check out Flame Worker as well. That's Flame the, Worker. Uh, oh, that was a one. documentary done about five years ago by a guy named Adam Sims. He went around to all of our studios all over and filmed us. I mean, uh, well, I'm in it. Um, I'm gee, right there's a whole list of the Colorado artists that are also in it. Uh, Pedro, I mean, uh, Black Bark Glass. Oh, uh, he lives in Arkansas, I believe now, but he moved from here. But yeah, no, he, he was there during that time. And it was kind of fun. Very cool. Um, it's really fun to show what the industry had become since the degenerate oh, yeah. here we are now, you know, a lot of us being, you know, professional style studios at home, you know, it's not the big cabin thing. Or and then like, events like Champs in Las Vegas are not one convention center room, but like three, it's yeah. incredible. They get bigger and bigger and bigger every year. It's it's pretty it's pretty wild. I was yeah. out in Vegas this past January for Las Vegas, and I was... Henry. It was January, it was the end of January, yeah. Huh. Champs was February. Oh, uh, yeah, Las that's right. January. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was mind blowing how much incredible glass there was. Just the quality of the glass. Like some of the things that I saw there were Yeah. It was <laughs> Yeah. It's you where, know it's where the glass blowers go to drool over things. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the, you know, we walk around going, I think I want to, yeah. I think I might put a down payment on that piece. Yeah. 
Uh, that one will cost me a house. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> like it, 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 uh, the first age that I went to, which was age Denver. I come around the corner and there's just Joe Peters coral reef rig stands this tall. It's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's fully detailed. Some like fifty some odd animals and coral types in it. And oh, I'm just like, just like, like, I'm like that's a huge collab to boot, and it's just yeah. like. Well, damn. <laughs> like, I have $12. Can I please have? I'm looking up going, you know, that's 20 years down the line for me here. Yeah. Um, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Yeah, I've got that skill level someday. Joe P. definitely constructs some Oh, you Joe. Joe's all the charts. Works of art. Speaking of, like, big name blowers, do you have guys that... Or did I ask you that? Yeah. Draw? Oh, sorry. I'm totally... I apologize. Um, so... Are the knobs the only vaporizer part that you do? No, with, uh, uh, with the I work on heater covers with them. I help make wands uh, and a uh, bunch of little parts for the SSVs. Gotcha. Yeah, constantly. Uh, like I've been learning. Like these guys right here, the heater covers. Yeah, yeah. I help cut. You know, I help get them finished up and ready to uh, ready to be put on all the vaporizers and whatnot. Uh, pretty much all the styles of the heater covers. Including the old school, yeah. the old school DVD ones. Okay, we got a couple of uh, what, four different. Yeah, it's technically three because the uh, standard dog box is the same as the, the DVD. Yeah, we yeah. got a few different types of heater covers, and they yeah. all have a lot of like, print in them, don't they? Yeah. Uh, sure they some of them do. Yeah. Uh, of course, other than the DVD, it's yeah. like, it's the old school clear one. Yeah. Um, like I mean, I, I help do basically anything they want. Like, I help make dab straws now, I, I help, you know, just any other little parts that they can teach me. It's always anything you can do to practice your fundamentals again and again and again, which is basically pro level of any sort, is just, it's always good. You, you, you never practice your fundamentals enough. Yeah, like basketball. Back, not to draw yeah. back to the same analogy. Actually, you know, no, that actually works quite well. Yeah. I mean, if you're out shooting hoops every day, you're going to be making shots in the game. Yeah, if you're sitting there, ma you know, practicing that seal a thousand times, you'll get that seal a lot better on the head of your feet. Yeah, exactly. Because our, our vaporizer parts are just a few simple yeah. applications and techniques, but if you take those, you can apply them to everything, everything else. Anything. Yeah. Yep. And that's the beauty of practicing your fundamentals. Mm -hmm. uh, so, do you like working for a little bit for me? Oh, yeah. I'm going to throw you a land under the bus. And no, on actually, uh, live, you know, I've worked at a couple other studios. It, it's always been a little hard in the industry to get glass blowers together because egos have a lot of hard time yeah. being checked. And glass it, this is, is the first too. shot that I've really seen that it, nobody carries around an ego. They, they don't sit there with a chip on their shoulder like there's some bomb thousand dollar an hour heady artist that you know everybody there has got to the same kind of motto of proto pays the bills because proto pays your bills <laughs> you know you can do the heady stuff for fun and make extra money but if you're determined to stay in this game you better learn how to do you know repeatable stuff Consistency. again and again again um, that and it's giving me access to stuff I've never had access to. Being able to work on a lathe, being able to sandblast my pieces, which has now become kind of regular yes. thing for a lot of the different styles because I can brand them now with different names. Uh, I can put logos on stuff that I've wanted to put logos on for different companies for years. Yeah. Uh, I've created my own. Uh, uh, these guys actually come directly out of the studio. Geez, I was just playing around trying to come up with an idea, and these are called my painter's blocks. Uh, I've got full color ones like these, and then I also have uh, sandblasted uh, clear ones that just have color on the tip uh, the tip and the uh, collar of the paintbrush, but they work perfect little kickstand. Yeah. Make sure that it never falls over, you know, always looks fun and unique. Oh, and there's a there's a sandblasted one yeah, right there. Yeah, there's a sandblast. That one's done with a uh, Alaskan night. Nice. That was I mean, just kind of playing around with some of the muddy striker colors to see what happens when I sandblast them. So there was a lot of stuff that I realized I blasted one of the manga colors and it came out looking like walnut wood when I was doing it. I was just like, okay, sweet. So we're gonna start playing with striker colors and seeing what happens when I take them to the sandblaster. Happy accidents. Uh, 
Yeah, well, it, it, I kind of want to see if I can create a psychedelic wood effect with red exotic or blue exotic, just to kind of have some fun with them. Yeah. All the colors that I never really liked using because I could never get them to come out looking nice, now I've got a new way to play with them. Do you do any other art besides just glass? I mean, paintbrush seems like uh, I draw. Well. I like to draw a lot, um, but beyond glass, I'm a, yeah, I'm a 35 year veteran gamer. I've been playing games since 1985. Uh, like I'm a collector as well, so most of my time is spent, you know, either gaming or uh, my number one art that I love to do, and I've been doing it since uh, since I was five, is photography. Uh, my mom was a professional photographer for a couple of the colleges here in state, including uh, PPCC here in town. Uh, we had our own, she had our own dark room for a long, long time, so I was trained on 35 millimeter oh, film. That's cool. And, you know, not only black and white, but how to develop color, all that stuff, and then got to move into the digital age to, like, I've got pictures up on some of my albums from years ago that everybody's told me, send that into National Geographic or something, you know, because it's just kind of fun. I, I don't really do it for anything more than I like to take pictures. Yeah, that's cool. That'd be <laughs> and nice. I like to photograph like the boys. Look, that. That takes a lot of patience. Quick sidebar. Uh, two days ago, I was pointing at the sky, talking about how we hadn't had as much lightning this summer as we had last summer. I point up at the sky and go, yeah, like right in this immediately lightning bolt, right down like at I, the end of my I finger. I actually agree with that. It was, uh, it was I incredible. Have seen, I haven't had a lot of chances in the past few years to catch, like I had album after album that it, this year's lightning bolts and fireworks shows, this year's lightning bolts, da, 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 all the way down, and there's like been about a five year gap because I'm lucky if I get one or two good lightning storms a year yeah. now comparatively to years back where it was just every afternoon we have lightning storms. And heavy. <laughs> you know, heavy rain, heavy lightning, and it's just not around these past few years. Yeah, it's, it's a little weird. Um, so I noticed you do have a couple of Grateful Dead tattoos. <laughs> this is like that I really tried to wait until the end to talk oh. about. But did you ever go on tour, follow the dead, or no? Sell I didn't get to follow the dead. I did get to go see uh, one of the last shows at Fillmore Green uh, back when I was about twelve or thirteen. Oh, nice. I got to see Jerry live, like actually play live, and that's a cool yeah. card to be able to put in your wallet. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I saw it was a, a card. Great, uh, great, cool little thing to see. So. Yeah, definitely. There's been a lot of, and there's been a lot of, like I've done a couple of the dead shows when it comes through. I'll go up and see Dead Company every once in a while. Uh, or when uh, Phil comes through with uh, Go, wow. Uh, Terrapin Family Band? Yeah, thank you. Yep. Brain's uh, function. It's been a long day. Do you, uh, do you ever like set up on lot and try to sell your glass? On not, those? Uh, not up on lot on that. Uh, I actually have a couple of events that I do set up regularly at. Um, the one is Palm the Palm here. Uh, the other one is a lot of the Manitou events. I grew up in Manitou, so okay. I'll go set up at their events when they have them. Um, uh, my favorite place to set up, honestly, is farmers markets. I love hitting the farmers markets because it's the one place that I don't actually have to focus on functional glass. That makes Everybody sense. Everybody loves marbles. They love pendants. They love things their kids can do. Yeah. So I can have uh, I can have all the fun of having all that stuff out, make tons of money off of that, and not have to constantly check IDs or that wonder you know wonder about all the people standing around the table because it's just family. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's families and it, you know, every once in a while, a few individual people. But they're at a farmer's market. They're not, you know, sitting there being stupid and getting high. Yeah, da, 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 you know, partying next to uh, next to a table full of glass. Yeah, exactly. I see a red uh, on a regular at a lot of events. And I'm like, scoop, scoop that way. Yeah, I, when I was you've been Vegas. drinking. I don't trust you. Please step away from the table. <laughs> yeah, when, when we were out at Glass Vegas. There was, uh, you know, those scooters that they have out in Vegas. It, trust me, somebody I crashed one right into, a, right into a table full of glass, and oh, uh -huh. I heard it from across the room. Uh, I think the one that uh, uh, the one that uh, the one that truly got us was uh, Champs a few years back with Gnarly Harley. He made a uh, a wonderful Majin Boo piece. It was for the Goblet Crab, um, except the it, except. He had the goblet up here that he was holding on to. The straw for the goblet's here, and then off of his back there's another mouthpiece, or uh, out of his hand there's another mouthpiece because there's a joint on his back. Oh, and wow. so you literally, you pull from the straw, 
and it would go down and up into the uh, up into that little like antenna thing that yeah. he had on his head. Um, dude reaches over like everybody had just gotten set up, just got there. Show hadn't even started. It wasn't opening day. It was set up day. Dude reaches over and decides to touch it, knocks it clean off the table. And it's just like, it, I've seen that so many times at events and stuff, and I'm just like, why? What, why are you doing that? So what'd you, you, do, what'd you do that at the store, and why are you doing that? Well, I mean, sadly, yes, they would do it at a store. Some I've a thousand times. Strange. I've worked head shops before while, but while being a glass blower, because, well, why not? I can make the extra sales, because unlike you guys, I actually know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I know what the customer wants when they describe something. You yeah, know. that's... It's not just the random head shop owner like, I'm gonna sell glass. You know, somebody comes in, I want a double donut with a tree with a tree perk and, and you know and, and a frit perk. What? Yeah. Here, have this hundred dollar piece, dude. He's trying to buy a thousand dollar piece. Why are you going? Yeah. <laughs> I've done yeah. that to a couple of shop owners in town, but it's like, no way. Let me uh, let me just so watch, watch this. So. Uh, do you like using the vaporizer or not? Have you, have you ever I, used one before you worked for us? Um, I had, uh, mind you, like, the first time that it, I mean, I remember when this place originally opened and the SSV started coming around town and yeah. stuff. And so, I mean, it, very old is style, you know, is still getting all that super perfection that, mm -hmm. you, that we have now. And, um, like, it's way better than the ones back then. I wasn't a big fan, a fan of vaporizing back then and wasn't kind of growing up because, well, we didn't have good wheat. Yeah. We didn't have good flour. We had brick swag and it all tasted the same. There was no point to it. Yeah. You know? And so now we've got all this great medical and we've got great recreational here and so many different flavors and strains. And yeah, I enjoy the vaporizer now way more than I did back then. And, you know, can't really wait to have my own, but. Nice. I, I, it's just a little close. Oh no, I got it. It's close enough. I do like this. And yeah, it's probably my favorite thing about it. It's like it's more interactive than just hitting it with a lighter. Well, it's not just that. It's the fact that like this part doesn't get hot. Like you can immediately dump them out, reload them. Whereas like a lot of your bowls and stuff, they get warm. They get warm. They get warm, they get warm because fire makes glass hot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you uh, do you have like a rig of your own that you hook up, or that you could you hooked up a, a vaporizer to before? Uh, yeah, actually, I have one of the Elevate paper uh, uh, ball recyclers. Oh, nice. Yeah, I picked up a new one when I first started working there because uh, you mentioned male joints. My first Elevate recycler had is it was so old it had a uh, male joint on it so it was like five six years old and that broke and i didn't really feel like trying to repair it or add a new one and uh, steve had a unattainium one laying around the shop that i was like can i buy can i buy that one like it's not a tanium and it's been my nemesis color for a lifetime oh wow what a fun color <laughs> <laughs> fun <laughs> color sure. fun fun yeah like a really fun color that we'll use. Did somebody ask you if you've ever used Trippy Tech? Have you ever used any of Steve's Trippy yes, Tech? Yes, I have. I've actually helped him make, uh, make it too. Yeah. Well, uh, what, uh, what part did you help with? Uh, I actually helped lay a lot of the color uh, for the uh, the initial prep. Uh, we'll make the, we'll make the rods and gotcha. and he'll do all the rest for building it. But yeah, no, I've made a couple of uh, a couple of Sherlock's out of it. A spoon piece I just did. Uh, I think it's somewhere floating around my car. I've got a little. That was an experiment of what happens when you wag it. That's such real fun when you wag it. It, it lives up to its name then. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen it. It's well, Steve, what we wag it up. Well, when you wag it, it was kind of cool because it starts building all this depth. And because the colors are so oh. tightly pressed together at that point, they create what is, it's an artifact called the complementary vibration. Uh, you did those black and white posters that you see. Mm. That, uh, that kind of move on their own when you yeah. look at them, it's because your eyes can't focus on both colors at once. That pendant does the same effect. It sits there and pulses and looks like it's moving even though it's solid glass and not going to move. That's uh, that's really cool. I don't know if I've ever seen Steve. Let me whack up some trippy tech. Uh, uh, Wait around because why not anything new I throw through every technique. Yeah. It, 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 like, I want to honeycomb some of it just to see what happens with it. 
Danny was the first one to wig wag it. Oh, so thanks, That's dude. cool. Heck yeah. Didn't know you were watching. Uh, do you have a preferred method of consumption? Uh, no, not really. Um, I've been consuming since God, so long. Like, 96. 96, oof. I don't... <laughs> Consuming longer than me, being on the surface. I know, I'm just loose on the middle. I mean, some people don't get into smoking weed until late. Like, I think Seth Rogen was like in his 20s before he started smoking weed. Uh, Doug Benson was for sure in his late 20s or early 30s when he started smoking weed. Uh, he's a comedian. Oh, okay. Real big in this okay. Smoking. He has a getting Doug with high. Yeah, podcast getting, he does yeah. on YouTube, I think. Not nearly as cool as Elevated Made on my What uh, what can we look forward in the future from you as far um, as actually that's a, uh, that's the one where I don't really know yet. Okay. Um, I've got the ability now to work on things that I've always kind of just put off to the side, like Crush Oval. You know, it's been around for five years now, but I haven't ordered any. You know, finally get it and pick some up at the at the studio to play around with it because. Now I have the ability to learn. Yeah. I have the ability, like when I when I come stomp across something, I've got shot mates that I can ask questions that are willing to answer them, that are happy to put in, to come over and hang out and you know show you and, stuff. And they're happy to talk about glass. That's yes. one thing that I love about <laughs> going over the studios. And if we're not talking that, about absolute random nothingness, we're talking about glass just leave because it's either non nonsense, just complete yeah. nonsense, or it's like <laughs> real serious glass talk. Oh my god. Well, like, yeah, well, you know, I'm live yesterday on mine just for the fun of it, making the uh, painter's locks for the website. Nice. And here comes Bobby, man, cruising by and goes, oh, look, holds up a thing and it shows this, somebody putting wax in a drawing mean container. And it, it's like, look, I found a way to get dabs on a plane. <laughs> it, it, like, okay, random, but thank cool. you. Cool. <laughs> it was just great. It was, it, like, uh, we, uh, we'll say random stuff that, uh, just to... Watch everybody kind of laugh. Yeah, that's it's definitely. Uh, Especially if it gets too silent in there. I, uh, apparently, we all have this problem with silence. Oh, that's something I've noticed. So <laughs> like, if it gets quiet. Somebody has to make yelling. a random noise. Yeah, somebody's gonna make like a, like a wookie noise or, uh -huh. or a screech or. Or we're sort of... gonna start screaming at our equipment or our glass. Like, all right, well, scream yeah. it. I didn't want to do that anyways. <laughs> What do you what do you see for like the future of the glass industry? Like, where do you see it evolving from here? You know, it, this is it, this is where it becomes interesting because I watched the China invasion happen. Mm -hmm. I've watched China glass get better and better and better over the years, and now I'm watching as people are literally not able to order from China. See the mass amount of American artists that they have right at their fingertips in their hometown. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went from one of, uh, I mean, let's see, when I first started in 2002, there was me, Nate, Carl, Andy, uh, DDK. DDK is also avant-garde yeah. glass. We had him on the yes, first episode. Yes, and that's a very good friend of mine. Please hit him up if you can. We love him. Um, and then so uh, the chip weave master, Matt Carpenter, he was actually here in town, and that was like it. That that was all the glass blurs in town when it came to making anything outside of killing views or stained glass. Gotcha. Um, and now I know at least forty personally, and I can easily guesstimate there's probably one hundred and twenty in town just in the springs. Wow, that's I mean, I know I guess. know a couple of guys who just didn't start it. Uh, one of my clients is just starting to play around with glass, so. And, you know, he, they buy glass off of me all the time for their shop, but then they're sitting there just, ding, 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 I want to start playing with it. I want to make things. Yeah. You know, it, 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 I tell people it's not an art. It's an addiction. It, it's, and, and I try to tell them. It's like, so people weird. don't believe me, but you can ask any of us. A lot of us have lost a lot of things to this art form because we refuse to give it up. I mean, and it's just, it is what it is. It's so much fun. It's really one of the most fun things I've ever done. I love a lot of glass. Alright. Okay. <laughs> um, well shoot, I think I'm, uh, good idea. I'm just about out of questions. Oh, we got some pendants over oh, yeah. here that we can talk about. Okay. Yeah, I totally forgot about Okay, these. so I don't do sculpting. I never really have one. 
and these guys are my first kind of. They're my exploration into having into having fun. These guys are the first two frog head pendants, and they're little. Uh, they're supposed to be tree frogs. I see, got I galaxy. See, I see tree frogs. Yeah, I got galaxy white. He kind of looks more like a lizard. But... Is that uh, blue blizzard on the eyeballs on that? One? Yes, blue blizzard and then slime and candy apple for his color. But you need sunlight to really. It doesn't get show off that that sparkle at all. Well, you just can't really tell the you can't tell the true shade of the red yeah. indoors with candy apple. When you get outside, though, it looks like metallic Cadillac red. Ooh. I mean, it's probably one of my favorite colors of, yes. uh, on the planet. And then, of course, I have my babies. These are my hippie sticks. I designed these guys about six years ago. It's a dab straw that, you know, I make it out of 25 mil. I don't like, I never really liked having the small tube, uh, tube in straws. Uh, my fear was always snapping them in my pocket. Yeah. Because I sit down and I have stuff in, because I like to wear Jinko, so I'll have what's in my front pocket ends up under my hip. I've sat down and broke glass pieces before and, so I kind of came up with these guys uh, after somebody asked me to design one, and I've been doing them for six years now, uh, or no, actually going on eight years now. Wow, it's getting a long time on those things. Time flies when you're having fun. Well, I forgot that you know I started them at my old uh, at the shop that a lot of the local people know me at, which was my uh, Jetwing house. Like I lived right on Jetwing. I had a sign and all sorts of stuff out for years. Just like basically ran a shop from home. Do you write label? Yes, actually I do. Uh, I've just started sandblasting them. I do labels. I do custom logos. I've done three or four of my friends' names. Um, I've actually got ones that'll that say hippie stick on them, and uh, my friend Teresa at, at the warehouse made those for me. I love those stickers, by the way. And oh. so while he's talking, what I'll do is if you've seen anything that you would love to see in your local stores, um, we do have a brand ambassador program where if you go into the store they choose to buy, you can earn a commission from that. All of this stuff is available because Danny is one of our glass blowers. So if you want a hippie stick, and you want all your friends to have hippie sticks and paint brushes, hit us up. We'll tell you how to go to your local head shop and get them in there. So I'll get you back here to Danny. Do you have a favorite pendant that you've made? I just I see that Moldavite one. I really, um, I really like it. That's. I mean, uh, do you have like a that specific? I've made. Yeah, your favorite pendant that you're like, man. I knocked it out of the park on this uh, one. Uh, yeah, actually, it, it's on my Instagram, uh, two years ago. They're called my sword protectors. Um, I did this series, I did this series of pendants called, uh, Weapons of Mass Death, which were swords and scythes and battle axes, they were all pendants, but they were dabbers. Um, and then I came up with this big old honeycomb, uh, honeycomb creature with one eyeball, it had ten, uh, like tentacles or horns to keep the weight centered, but you could slide, you slid the sword right into it, and I got them designed to the point where you bend over, they won't tilt, they won't dump the sword, but I've made a few of them, it's probably one of the, uh, my favorites that I've ever done, and uh, beyond that, I'm thinking probably my collab with Chad Parker that I did with Half-Life, that I took one of his uh, monster marbles and backed it with a whole bunch of Half-Life and made solid Half-Life uh, hand faceted crystals. I sat there with the paddle and the flame making actual 14-sided uh, and pointed crystals just nice, real, uh, nice as I could. Did this big old head. <laughs> wow. It was heavy. That's cool. It was like an inch. It was probably an inch and a half marble cap to start with. So yeah, I mean, it had some weight to it. You felt that thing on your chest, I'm sure. Yeah, no, like, I feel this thing by the end of the day. It's not that heavy, but th those big pendants can hurt. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've, um, I've accidentally, unlike the more bulkier ones, I've squished it into my sternum. And you feel that. You feel that for sure. I'm really starting to like that one, but I still don't think that's the nicest one that I've done. What are you talking about? It's super dope. Come I, on, guys. Done, well, Tell him how dope that is. Wrong. I really like it, but... You know, you asked me that question. That's not the nicest pendant I've ever made. The opal in there. there, there I've had some awesome that, uh, that are posted up on Instagram that are just. I even amaze myself when I post them. I'm just like, do they really look that good? <laughs> yeah. 
I've, I've had that feeling once or twice. And, and then, like, what did that mean? I'm proud of my work, but I've never been one to really talk about that much. Like, I don't like to sit there and act like I'm a heady artist because I go, you know, I know heady artists. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Big dog. He's an heavy artist. Yeah. Yeah. I, love. I mean, especially that that new Egyptian set thing she did that just blew my freaking mind. Yeah, speaking of the Big Dog and uh, Windstar, the collab that they did for Las Vegas, or yeah, Las Vegas this past year. I can't remember the name of it. Some Native American word. With oh, fifteen leather with fifteen oh, leathers. Yeah. It's like a it's like a, a bulls or not? Like, yeah, like a yeah. longhorn skull with just all sorts of yeah. feathers sculpted. Oh and, man. Philichello, or not Shayla Philichello, is still my. Uh, Shayla is probably one of my top three female artists in the game. Like uh, her lace face, and uh, one of my favorites from a long time ago. And uh, she popped up on my Facebook recently because she uh, she works last still, but not as much as uh, Rena Riviera. She did these. She does these rigs that are coconut. It, it's a coconut drink. Yeah, yeah. It's got the it's got the parasol. It's got the coconut drink. Oh, it's got the it's got the parasol. It's got the Oh, it's nice. got the it's got the parasol, it's got the lime wedge. I mean it looks like a real coconut drink. That's really cool. And it's all glass? <laughs> yeah, it's all glass. You just sandblasted te uh, texture on the outside oh, to get cool. the coconut to yeah. be, you know, kind of matte It's a really cool piece. I wanted one for a long time. <laughs> have you done Grateful Dead pieces? Yes. Yes, I have done Grateful Dead pieces. I did uh space your uh, space your face pendants that were about yay big. Did those guys out of the crush colors? Uh, I used Penelope, uh, Penelope Palms, uh, Firefox Glass. I use She's her nice. Dead Millies all the time. I absolutely I love, love her work. Jerry Bears. I have, a, uh, I have a massive pile of them at, at, at there. I actually helped her pull one of them uh, when I was working at DL Hayes when we nice. had that head shop. Open. We, uh, we have an interview with, the, actually, I'm not sure if it's up on our website, but I did an interview at Las Vegas with her. So that, if it's not on our website, that will be up on yeah, our website. Yeah, she's great. Right. She's a real fun person. Oh, yeah, she was super nice. Yeah, but, um, okay. so, but on that, I haven't really done any sculpted dead pieces or anything like that. I kind of stick to the pendants and know we work with them, but I don't know. They're like anything dead. They, they're, they're, the imagery that they use and the, the symbolism for that band. There's so much oh. that it's so, yeah, like, there's okay, yeah, yeah, four different things that are synonymous with that band just on his tattoos. But yeah, that's one thing that makes the, I mean, that's where our scene came from, was from the Grateful Dead, from Bob Snodgrass selling his pipes out on the, on the dead lot. Yeah. It's uh, come a long way since then. And <laughs> yeah. I love seeing pieces that pay, pay respect to the Grateful Dead and sort of like where our scene came from. Uh, well, we're, we're about out of time here. I really appreciate you stopping in and talking to me. Yeah, that was right. super fun. Uh, hopefully we can have you on in the future again. I am, man. I'm always down to talk, talk a lot. So I, it, it, it's literally, I made it my life. I mean, I'm not just a horror artist. I can work in every style. I do Italian crystal, I do killing fusing, done stained glass. Uh, in college, I learned how to do some silver and goldsmithing so that oh, I could cool. set, uh, set glass caps into, you know, yeah. decent, nice, high-end jewelry. Kind of want to get that part of my... That's uh, I want to get that going. I saw uh, I really Instagram. The glass parrot. The glass parrot. It's all one word. <laughs> we, uh, I'll, I'll save it for next time. And thanks for joining, everybody. We really appreciate you uh, watching here with us. Uh, we'll be here next week. We have a giveaway that we're doing on Elevate. Uh, underscore glass underscore gallery this page that'll be next Friday we're doing with modified creations Gage no. Hamilton yeah you know him oh Lord? yeah yeah we uh, <laughs> we got a, a little <laughs> he works with one of my other favorite glass blowers on um, we have a little uh, pastel serum uh, eyeball sculpted eyeball that we're going to be giving away from, from him next week wow so you can enter the giveaway um, I'm good I'll let other people get that chance <laughs> Oh, tea tree glass. Hey, how's it going? I like your work too. Um, yeah, so thanks everybody. We really appreciate it. Instagram's about to kick us off. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, yeah. Teresa. Have a great night, everybody. Good See night. ya. Good night. Elevate.